May God speak to us through his word and in our worship this morning. We are continuing our thoughts this month during what we've come to know as Creation Tide. Today has been called Mountain Sunday for several reasons. Our Old Testament reading and Psalms speak of God's holy mountain, referring to the city where David built Jerusalem on Mount Zion. Later, the Jewish people referred to the city on the nearby hill also as Mount Zion. Mountains also speak of the created world, the rugged and the cold, the beautiful, the different, and also areas that are home to many different species of animals and plants. They also point us to those mountaintop experiences where we're able to experience nature and God in a special way. Reflecting the experience of Jesus and the three apostles on the Mount of Transfiguration. As our reading from Isaiah put it, we ponder your steadfast love, O God, a love and care that is reliable and ongoing. What does it say to us, this creation tide? We're reminded by by our Isaiah reading that despite the problems of earth and life, as it is, God promises something better, more complete, more holistic and indeed we don't have to go far at the moment to see those problems of the world. The price of gas, the shortage of petrol, the ongoing problems with Covid and strife in so many places. But whether we see that as something beyond this life or God working with us to maintain and prove, improve his world, we're called to be part of God's activity in that world. But what does this season devoted to creation remind us of? Why is there a need for the COP26 meeting next month? Put simply, we have dominated rather than being stewards of God's gift of creation. We've not stopped to think what we're doing in the wider world when we have sought to make things for our own benefit. I don't think we need to retreat to some medieval or prehistoric time when all was well, but rather to take more account of how we do things, how quickly we reuse the resources that we've been given. All of us can play our part, not just by being better at recycling, but in our whole approach to life. But what, you may ask, does this relate to our third gospel reading? Our passage from Mark speaks uh, uh, to us all, represented by those first disciples, being sent to be his representatives in the world. We're sent to share the good news of God's love, which surely means not just believe this and you'll be all right when you die, but also live like this, share his love and his approach to life now. Respect his creation in which we're appointed stewards, carers and not just users. However we understand the promises at the end of the passage, we, when we can, what we can agree on is that whatever life might bring, we're not left alone. The creator and sustainer of all that is, is the one we see in Jesus Christ and whose life we can share through his spirit. From Isaiah, we read this. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I'm about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. We, as followers and sharers in God's promises to the Israelites, represented by Jerusalem, for we share life with God, who not only created, but is creating as an ongoing process. 
Thus may we grow to being a joy and a delight. Then maybe we will share some of those mountaintop experiences. And to our Creator God be the glory. Amen.